What's up guys, John the Realtor here. Welcome back to the uh, Residential Purchase Agreement Series Part 7. Uh, we're gonna get started. I just wanted to thank you guys if you've been here this long and you've um, waited um, and watched all the videos. I really appreciate it. Every video is gonna go page by page. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so here we go. So we are in the summary uh, part of the transaction in your uh, zip forms, but uh, or in your car form. So um, we're gonna go ahead and go to documents and we're gonna go straight into the residential purchase agreement. And um, if you noticed all the uh, other documents there, those were all documents from when we clicked on different check boxes. Uh, so those automatically will appear if you have uh, anything that you've check marked. So, uh, let me go down to um, page three, okay? If you remember in page two, we ended with um, possession, contingencies, uh, and, and uh, documents and compliance, okay? So in allocation of costs, what we are going to talk about is a couple things. The first section is called included and excluded items. These are items that your buyer wants in the home. I want the chandelier, I want the washer and dryer, and so on and so forth. So um, one thing that I have done here is I have specifically put in chandelier, and here's why. Uh, you will have times where the buyer wants something, and let's say the agent is at the property with you guys showing, or the seller happens to be there, and one of them says, oh yeah, the chandelier, I'm gonna leave it, no problem and you think, okay, we don't need to put it in the contract because the uh, seller said they're gonna leave it. Well, what happens is if the seller later on says, oh, you know what, to their agent, my wife said that that's really important to her because it was given to her by her parents or whatever, uh, we're gonna end up keeping it. Well, now you're in trouble because your buyer thinks they're gonna keep it and you have to go to them and say, hey, they decided to keep the chandelier, so, as tedious as that sound as in, and as silly as that sounds, it is actually true and it has happened not just with that kind of thing, but with everything, refrigerators, whatever it is, uh, that has happened. So wanna make sure that that uh, it's in the contract from the beginning, even if they say you could have it, put it in there, okay? Um, now here's the thing, doesn't mean that you can't renegotiate that in the middle of the contract. You could go to the agent and say, look, they said we could have it, could you talk to them again? We'll send you an addendum to the contract stating that it will be included at no monetary value. Are you okay with that? They could still say no, but ultimately at least you try, but it's you're doing your buyer a disservice if you don't put it in the contract, okay? Because whatever's in the contract needs to stay in the contract. So, um, so basically guys, you put in everything that you want in the home. If there's extras, then of course you would put extras. If there's anything excluded, uh, then of course you would put in there, for example, chandelier is excluded because you discussed it. So that's that, that's pretty self-explanatory there, okay? Um, <clears throat> allocation of costs. So this section is very, very, very important because this allocates who is paying for what. This is super important, guys. I have received offers where the this section is blank in certain sections or it'll say, termite inspection but no one is checkmarked or it'll say home warranty but no nothing is checkmarked so it's kind of like well who's paying for it so your first one is your natural hazard disclosure report and tax information um, generally that's we asked a seller to do that that's generally a seller paid expense uh, normally it's anywhere from uh, 89 bucks to 125 bucks or what have you so that's done directly through the natural ha the NHD company uh, that is the report that talks about um, everything that has to do with your property. So whether your property is in a flood zone, whether it's in a, on an earthquake fault line and so on and so forth. So that will tell everything about the property, fire zone, that kind of thing, um, which helps with uh, knowing what is going on there, okay? Uh, so of course you wanna put the seller or buyer or both if they wanna split it and you wanna, and you wanna um, talk about who pro is gonna provide it. So who's providing this report who's going to do the inspection okay so the next one is, on the next two are generally blank okay so if you just put termite inspection here okay generally this right here it's kind of like well you're just doing an inspection so who what, what are you asking for you just asking for an inspection so what you could do is you could take it out of here 
okay? So if you're if your buyer's paying for it, doesn't matter. You could put it there, no problem. But generally what I do is I will put it down here under other terms and I will put here, okay? I will put the termite inspection to be paid by the seller. Um, inspection and certification. Okay, so what this does is it tells the seller that they need to provide not only the termite inspection, but the certificate stating that the that the property is clear of any dry rot, termites, anything like that. Okay, so that's what that is. Uh, septic certification. So here's the thing, you want to put in there septic cert, seller to pay for it but there is an addendum attached to this, okay? And I'll explain that here in a second. Uh, same thing goes with everything else, guys. Smoke alarms, CO detectors, water heater bracing, you wanna make sure the seller is responsible for that. Government required point of sale inspections and reports. Sometimes certain cities have city reports or city inspections that need to be done. So um, that's you, you wanna ask the seller for that. If the city does not require it, then you know you don't have to ask for it. Uh, they'll probably counter it out, which is what I do. Uh, government required point of sale corrective and remedial action. Some cities have, for example, um, earthquake strapping. Let's say the home has a uh, a subfloor or a crawl space. Uh, if it's if it's a certain but a certain age, it won't be uh, earthquake strapped to its its um, current code that it should be. So a lot of times what will happen is that will be required in order to close. Um, the appraiser will look at that or a home inspector will look at that and that, that will be required to close um, for that reason because it's not up to code. So generally you wanna make sure you ask for that up front, okay? All right, escrow fees and owner title insurance policy. Generally your escrow fees are each to pay their own, meaning the buyer pays their own escrow fees and the seller pays their own escrow fees. So each pay their own is generally what it is. Um, and then you wanna name your escrow company. So I know that a lot of times people put seller's choice. I don't recommend putting seller's choice because seller's choice, it leaves it way too open. And I mean, they can counter you on it, but naming an escrow company is better than not because they'll still counter you anyways, but at least you're trying to name your escrow company, okay? Same thing goes for uh, title. Uh, seller generally will pay for title insurance. Uh, so you can ask who you want the title company to be, uh, unless you're working with uh, like a Chicago title that does title and escrow or fidelity. You could do you know something like that as well. You can ask for both. Uh, buyer's lender, that's buyer. So county, so all the rest are pretty straightforward guys. County transfer tax, city transfer tax. If there is a city transfer tax, a lot of cities don't have it. Your HOA, so your HOA transfer fees is very important. So you can add, you can state that both the buyer and the seller will split it, but generally it is a it is a seller paid expense, okay? Because they're transferring the HOA to the buyer. So normally to get that started, the seller will pay for that, or you can ask for it. They don't they don't necessarily have to. Uh, same thing goes for everything else. So your home warranty guys again. If you notice, everything is checkmarked and nothing is blank. So same thing here. So home warranty plan, the seller to pay for home warranty plan not to exceed 650 um, through American Home Shield. But here's the thing, a lot of agents leave this portion blank where it says home warranty plan. They leave it blank. So not necessarily the best thing to do because if I'm an agent um, representing the seller, I'm just gonna tell escrow, just order a basic plan. I mean, it is what it is. But if you put in there basic, including AC and roof, and now at least they know what to re reference off of, okay? Um, selling agent uh, related to the buyer, ha but has no vested interest in the property. So this would be, I, I did this as, as an example to tell you guys, you have to put everything in the contract. You don't have to put that, obviously, if you're not related to the buyer, but let's say you're representing a family member, you have to disclose that you are related to the buyer in one way, shape, or form. And you have to also say that you have no vested interest in the property. So you're not one of the buyers and so on. If, you're, if this is a listing, you would say the same thing. If you're not vested uh, interest in the property, if you're not part owner and so on. The, the one thing I wanted to talk to you guys, which is on the next page, so you'll see in the next video, is your septic well property monument uh, and propane addendum. So this is very, very important, okay? This document 
is a document that specifically talks about who's paying for what during the septic inspection. Um, I will do a separate, uh, a separate video on that one uh, because that one is going to be uh, a part of the contract if you were to check mark it. I'm going to do a, a separate video with different addendums that could be attached to the contract, like the FHA, VA, and mandatory clauses one. So if you have a v, uh, FHA or VA buyer, that one's very important. Uh, if the septic, so septic is important. So I'm going to do a separate video for those, uh, but for now, we're going to cut it here. Thank you guys for watching once again. Thank you for staying this long. If you've stayed, I appreciate it. Uh, so for now, uh, stay tuned for part eight, which will be the, uh, the this page here, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a great day.